The new Apple M1 processor computers have really kind of changed the game when it comes to the personal computer and what you can do with your technology at certain price points. Spoilers to this video is really pushed down the amount of money that you need to spend to get cutting edge technology and performance. Not only is it cut down the money, it's cut down the size too. And today, I'm going to talk about what I think is the best budget way to fully commit to the Apple ecosystem. So what way is it? Check out all this stuff. Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. First up, I do wanna mention that the title of this video is the best budget M1 ecosystem, not the cheapest M1 ecosystem. The difference, okay, Gary, who cares? My rationale between those two titles would be for the cheapest, I'd say, get the iPhone SE, the Mac mini, call it a day, slam dump, boom, bing bam, editing so easy for you today, Gary. And sure, that might be good for some people. I'm not though, I don't think that's all that useful of a video, and I think maybe spending a little bit more, but getting way more overall functionality, that's the real way to go when we talk about getting into a budget ecosystem. There are a few things that we're gonna need to have to be what I would consider a full and complete Apple ecosystem. And okay, I've said ecosystem like 10 times so far. When I say the ecosystem, let me clarify that I'm focusing all of this on creative and productivity tasks. A very valid way of getting into that could just be getting an iPhone, calling it a day. If you don't have any specific work needs, an iPhone is basically all you need. So if we are gonna be focusing today on the working professional slash creative, we'll need some kind of a computer, some kind of a phone that can provide internet access. And the cool part of today's video is that could be potentially it if you are looking for a more minimalistic system. But I do think there is value in a set of wireless headphones and a way to check notifications without staring at that phone. Kind of gave it away with that last one, huh? First up, let's talk about our computer, you know, the computer, kind of the whole thing, we're building this around and the reason that we're calling this the M1 ecosystem. As of today, we have three options on the market and while the Mac mini is the cheapest and the MacBook Pro 13 is a very good all-rounder, I think for purposes of getting the best value for dollar as the foundation of our ecosystem, there is nothing better to get than the M1 MacBook Air. This already has a monitor, already has a keyboard, already has a lot of the functionality built into it, so you don't have to buy extra stuff. And I am gonna recommend getting the base model. If you need more than this in the memory or storage realm, you're already gonna know what you need and you don't need this video to tell you what computer to get. That lowest end MacBook Air will end up costing $999, or $899 if you have the education discount. For that money, you'll get the M1 processor with its eight core CPU, seven core GPU, you do lose out on one core of the GPU. Oh no, it, it's not that big of a deal. Eight gigabytes of unified memory and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive. Not the most robust storage system on the planet, but certainly doable. If you do need more storage though, I would probably err on the side of buying an external solid state drive or external spinning drive instead of paying Apple's premium for memory. But this is the computer that we're gonna build off of today. And one of the coolest things about the new M1 Max from a budget ecosystem perspective is that you can also use iPhone and iPad apps on the MacBook Air, which totally eliminates a need for another device. So unless you really need that touchscreen functionality, this can basically fill the role of an iPad too. How cool is that? I think that's really cool because it, it saves us from needing an iPad for specific niche apps. Now, there could be a couple of issues with touch developed apps not working exactly the same way on a non-touch capable computer, but I think overall this will save you from spending another $500 to $1,000 on an iPad Air or iPad Pro. This will unlock key features such as AirDrop, iMessage, those iOS apps, and you can use the Apple Productivity iWork Suite to have a fully functioning work platform for no extra money. I cannot get over that every time we have one of these ecosystem videos. Like that saves you so much money to not need to buy another suite. Plus, I did say this was both productivity and creativity. You can use iMovie and GarageBand to do both video and audio editing for free. And all of these first party software applications have already been optimized for the M1 chip, meaning this laptop using those programs will give you the same level of performance that you'd expect out of a much bigger and much more expensive Apple machine. Like that is, man, this, this is, I didn't want to call this the best overall Apple ecosystem. I wanted to call this the M1 to differentiate, but I do think that these M1 computers 
they're phenomenal. So I won't go any more in depth on what the MacBook Air can do as part of this overall system. I've made several videos on the topic, but I will leave you with one last takeaway. Even with all of these cool functions that I've talked about, you also get some of the best battery life in the business, the best battery life in the business, the triple B. This has legit usage and habit changing amount of battery life. It's crazy. It's crazy. The last time we made a budget video right here was the point where we recommended the iPad. And if I was going to recommend an iPad in this sort of kit, I wouldn't. But if you if you made me, I would absolutely recommend the iPad Air due to its price to performance. It's hard to recommend anything other than that for the new M1 MacBooks because they're currently unmatched in their functionality if you are looking to do real work. I'm sorry, iPad Pro. Can it hear me? It's hiding out in the office over there. I wonder if you can actually hear me or not. I love iPads, I do, but they really need to step up their game to stay relevant. Okay, on to the next part of the ecosystem. When we did that cheapest Apple ecosystem video earlier in the year, I extolled the virtue of the iPhone SE because at its price point, it's really hard to beat. And for this video, even though we're not talking about the straight up cheapest version of Apple's tech, I went back and forth really hard about the SE versus the 12 versus the 12 mini. All of those phones really were in contention, but I do want this video to be about the best value for dollar for those of us making money with these pieces of tech. So I'm gonna keep the iPhone SE from 2020 on this list as the best budget phone option. For its $399 price tag, you get the entire iPhone experience. Sure, you'll miss out on the newest screen technology, you won't get the latest processor, but who cares when you are paying half of the money for 90% of the capabilities. I mean, seriously, it's that drastic that you spend so little and get so much. On display with the iPhone SE, you'll get the A13 processor and 64 gigabytes of storage. No, I'm not super thrilled with 64 gigabytes of storage, but this price, like the price of this phone makes that a much easier pill to swallow. The SE continues to impress me to this day, which is why I still have it. It's fast, it's snappy, has okay-ish battery life, but you get all of the great iPhone necessities. iMessage, AirDrop, you'll get that needed LTE internet connection. Decent camera, this, okay. In fairness, this is probably where the phone suffers the most. And you'll still get what I think is the most important, Touch ID. I know, I've been making these videos for a minute. I see the comments, I see other people's channels and other online discourse. I understand that that might not be a popular opinion as Face ID and its ilk have taken over the biometric approval world. But all this time later, I'm still wearing a mask whenever I leave the house and Face ID continues to be a huge pain in the butt with a mask. Having Touch ID gives me instant access to my phone. And while no, it doesn't take that long to unlock by typing in the pin number, add up all of those little unlocks over a work trip or a trip to the grocery store, and it will quite frankly drive you insane. And when I say you, I mean me. It drives me insane all of the time. And maybe that's why I make so many YouTube videos. We're learning stuff about ourselves today. If you really want the best of the best when it comes to the iPhones, instead of getting the cheapest, you could go with something like the 12 Pro Max, which will cost more than the MacBook at $1,099. For that more than double price, you'll get a better screen, better battery life, better camera, bigger phone. Objectively, it's more powerful with a higher end sensor inside for the camera, but you'll lose out on Touch ID. And all those other things are little things to me. Are those little improvements really worth spending more than the cost of a computer to get? Not according to this list, they aren't. It's my video, right? Okay, next up. Like we said in the intro, if you really wanted to, you could stop here. You could just have these two having spent roughly $1,299, which is the price of the MacBook Pro 13. You could have this, call it a day. You've got a great work platform with the MacBook and all of the connectivity you could ever need with the iPhone. What else, I mean, what else do you really need? Because that's, that's how business works. This is how the basic of what every business gets done, but it wouldn't be an ecosystem video if there weren't another few key pieces of that Apple system that I would say are nice to haves, but they are really nice to haves. They're not just nice to haves, they're really nice to haves. First off, let's talk about an Apple Watch. If you are into anything involving fitness, this is amazing. This is my favorite fitness tracker ever made. Combine that with cell phone notifications, all of the very powerful health and tracking apps, the Apple Watch, this thing right here, is a huge chunk of the reason to get an iPhone in the first place. Without this, there isn't as much reason to go with an iPhone. When we're talking about the Apple Watch, there are a couple of different options out there, and much like the cell phone, we could get the Apple Watch SE that does have most of the functionality of the entire Apple Watch line, but the price difference isn't that much than the top of the line Series 6, 
So for today, we're gonna go with that Series 6. This watch will come in at the same $399 price as the iPhone SE or $279 for the SE. See, it's not that big of a difference. With the Apple Watch Series 6, you'll get the always-on retina display, the blood oxygen apps, the ECG app, a dual-core S6 processor, everything. Everything that the Apple Watch can do, yeah, it's on display here. Get it? The display? It's on display here. You've heard me say this before, but I'm a pretty avid runner, and this not only tracks your runs, but it'll track your heart rate, VO2 max, ECG, and blood oxygen levels, and if you get the version with cellular service, you can even stream music without needing a phone. Or if you get in trouble when you're out and about, you can make a phone call without needing anything else. This has... This functionality has saved my runs because I used to be carrying around a cell phone, and even though the SE is really small and it's easy to hold, I hate, I hate, 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 carrying things around with me when I'm running. I just, look, running sucks already, right? You just wanna, I wanna be in the zone. I don't wanna be in the zone holding stuff. Plus, if you are in meetings or I guess webcam enabled Zoom calls now, it's much more accepted to quickly glance down at your watch for notifications instead of constantly looking at your phone during a meeting or obviously looking off screen at something else. No, I'm totally paying attention to you. Yep, nope, what you're saying, your reports, yep, that's important. This little gadget makes it so much easier to politely multitask in meetings. And being polite about that multitasking, it's all part of the working office game. We all work, but we gotta make sure we're doing it politely. And the last thing that I would highly recommend as part of a budget Apple ecosystem would be a pair of AirPods or AirPods Pro. Though I have them here today, you don't exactly need the AirPods Pro, but if you are in a sometimes noisy house with an eight year old and a wife getting her own advanced degree, let me obviously stare into the camera for you. I wonder who could be in a specific house like that. Sometimes it's just nice to have active noise cancellation and be able to either focus on your work by maybe listening to some lo-fi Zelda tunes or even have your meetings audio piped in through the headphones so as not to get distracted when your eight-year-old decides to jump off of your treadmill and make it sound like your house is absolutely collapsing. Again, let me stare into the camera about that oddly specific statement. Who does that happen to? You can get the AirPods for around $129 to $159, depending on location and sale, while the AirPods Pro will be more like $200 to $249. And if you have the quieter house or a quieter place of creation and work, okay, then go with the AirPods. But much like the Apple Watch, I would say that the $80 to $100 spent here is very well spent going with this Pro model. These are easily my favorite headphones ever made on the planet Earth. And the AirPods Max model? Uh, I don't know that any list called the best budget accessories of anything can include a $549 pair of headphones. For context, that would cost more than both the phone and the watch and the AirPods. All of these things individually, those headphones cost more. And I would find that that money could be spent way more usefully somewhere else than on a pair of Bluetooth headphones. That is our entire M1 budget ecosystem. Let's really quickly do a roundup and number check. M1 MacBook Air, $999 iPhone SE, $399, Apple Watch Series 6, $399, and the AirPods, $129, bringing us to a grand total of $1,926. Yeah, frankly, that's pretty expensive. Two grand is expensive, but I would say that this is a fantastic price for what we are getting. For comparison, that's less than the cost of a base model MacBook Pro 16, and is less than the cost of one of the high-end productivity slash creative Windows laptops. Think about this, for with all of this kit, we could literally do just about anything. From running an actual YouTube channel, managing a day job as any kind of an office worker, doing two at the same time like somebody I know, keeping up with our health and yearly fitness goals, to having meetings on the go by a couple of different combinations here. Like there's several ways here to do meetings on the go. This is why people like and love the Apple ecosystem. For a reasonable price, we can do everything we need. We do not have to spend the most money to get the most functionality. The high end is there if we want it, but it's not a necessity, it's a little nice to have. We talked about the real nice to have, spending the most amount is a little nice to have. I think the Apple tax is a thing of the past and these SE and lower end options having almost the exact same amount of power as the higher end models definitely shows that Apple isn't afraid to let you have nice things without breaking the bank. And if you like this video and you wanna see more videos about the MacBook Air, good news, here is my entire playlist showing you hours of content cause I just, I love this thing so much I can't shut up about it. And you can find that by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. I just, I will not stop making videos about it. Thanks for watching.